I love Linux, and anybody who watches this channel knows that. But boy, sometimes there are Linux distros that are so darn bad, it is almost impossible to like them. Now this video was probably a bit unexpected, because I usually don't publicly bash Linux distros. But in the end, I give my honest opinion with every review, and this is what it came down to. Real quick before we start, thanks to Donna Murray and Mistro Tech for recommending this video. So today we're going to be taking a look at Slytads, which is a very disappointing Linux distro. The first roadblock I ran into was that I couldn't even get this thing to boot. Yeah, that's right. This thing does not support booting from a 64-bit UEFI system, which, by the way, is basically what almost every machine runs on nowadays. It only supports 32-bit or 64-bit legacy BIOS. I mean, it makes sense because this is designed for older computers, but still, I mean, you can't even get it booted unless you have a legacy BIOS. That meant I had to bring out this bad boy, the Dell Inspiron 1501. This was actually my first computer, and I've actually edited many early JPT videos on this thing. And boy, it was a long and slow process, but... I did it, and with this laptop, I actually got SlyTaz to boot, but I quickly ran into other problems. <laughs> SlyTaz seems to use its own package base, so it doesn't have anything like apt or something similar. Because of this, there are literally like 50 packages you can install on this Linux distro. It's really not a lot. No flat packs and no snaps, nothing like that. There wasn't even a screen recorder application, I couldn't even get one installed. And since my capture card uses HDMI, which is a luxury this old laptop does not have, I had to just crop the camera right in front of the screen, so that's why you see it's cropped how it is, and it's not screen recording, sorry about that. So, those were two major problems right there. It doesn't even boot on computers made within the last 10 years, practically. And there are almost no packages available. Seriously, just to show you, here is a list of all the packages you can install on this Linux distribution. It's not a lot at all. And on top of that, most of these packages are dependencies for other packages. So like divide that number by three or five or something like that, it's not a lot. Hey, at least you can purchase JPT merch. Price is starting at just $12, link in the description below. Oh wait, wait a minute. You can't. <laughs> the browser is too outdated. Hey, okay, at least we've got Firefox in the repos. Maybe I'll try installing that. Nothing's happening. <laughs> okay, well, well, we'll try launching it from the terminal. Seriously? Okay. I guess the one package we can install doesn't actually work. Bummer. <laughs> well,. On the bright side, this is still free and open source software. It still lines up with the Linux ideology, and I give it respect for that. But other than that, it sucks. <laughs> the only thing you can really do is play audio and video files, and a few of the built-in games that come with SlyTest. But there are much better options designed specifically for those purposes, such as LibreElec for media playback, or Batisera for retro gaming. Those operating systems will also likely still run on older hardware. On the not so very bright side, SlyTest is a very lightweight system using just 88 megabytes of RAM, which is possibly the lowest I've ever seen on a desktop operating system. Because of this, I can honestly see this distro being useful for turning many old machines into servers, but 
As far as the desktop goes, this distribution absolutely sucks. I mean, sure, it makes your computer faster, but what's the point of your computer being faster if it still doesn't do anything? <laughs> In my opinion, this Linux distro is obsolete and serves no purpose. Yeah, it's a little harsh, I know, but it's my honest opinion. Thank you guys so much for watching. I'll see you next time.